guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the Likud question combination sum. All right, so recently, I think last month, I solved the question combination sum too. So do that, uh, check that out after this question. All right, so given an area of distinct integers called candidates and a target integer called target, return a list of all unique combinations of candidates where the chosen number sum to target. You may return the combinations in any order. The same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. Two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different. All right, so now that we have this, let's just go through the example real quick. So we have this example uh, where our candidates are the numbers 2, 3, 6, and 7. And our target is 7. So over here, we have two answers. So one of them is 2, 2, and 3. And when you add them up, you get 4 plus 3, giving us 7. And over here, we have the number 7, which all of them, when added up, give us a value same to the target, which in this case is 7. And one more thing we want to notice is that the same number can be chosen how many ever times as needed. All right, so this over here is going to be a classic uh, backtracking question. It's going to be pretty similar to combination sum 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to directly go into the code of this and kind of explain how each step looks like. All right, so over here, we're going to start off by having our results list. So self.results is going to equal to an empty list. So this over here is going to be outputted and it's going to hold all of the possible combinations which sum up to the specific target. So this is what we're going to end up returning. So let's just do that. Return self.results. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we want to define a few more things. So we're going to also have store our candidates value so we can refer it, uh, refer to it when we call our backtracking function. So self.candidates, and that's just going to be equal to our candidates. All right, and finally, that should be it. So over here, we're going to call our backtracking function, and I'll show you how this works. So we'll call backtrack, and what exactly are we going to give it over here? So over here, we're going to have a path. Now, this path is going to be a list of numbers, which is going to add up to whatever the target value is. So over here, instead of writing path, we're just going to start off with an empty list of numbers. Okay, so an empty list right there. And over here, we're also going to be giving it our target value. And this target value is going to start off being the same target value as over here. And what we're going to do at each iteration, when we add numbers to our path over here, we're going to decrease that same number from our target. So what I mean by that is let's just go back to the first example. And over here, our target has a value of 7. And um, let's go over here. So in the beginning, we chose the number 2. So now, after choosing the number 2, our target is going to change to the number 5, since we have already accounted for the number 2 here. And the rest of the numbers don't need to add up to 7. Instead, they have to add up to the number 5. And once this target ends up reaching the number 0, that means that we've got our answer. So that is also why we're going to keep track of our target over here. And I think that should be it for our backtracking function. So now that we have this, let's actually define what this function is going to do. So we're going to have this function called backtrack. It's going to take in self and we're also going to give it a path. So let's just call that path. And over here, we're also going to have our target. Let's just call that target as well. OK, actually going back, we actually need to give it one more thing. And the other uh, variable, that, a parameter that we want to give it is going to be called index. Now, this index over here is going to tell us at what index of our candidates list are we currently on. All right. So that index in the beginning, we're going to start off with the very first value, which over here has a value of zero. So we're going to start off at the zeroth index. And let's also add this to our function. And let's call it index. All right. Perfect. OK, so now let's go to our backtracking part of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all of the numbers. So let's just do that. So for x and range, and what numbers exactly are we going to go through? So we're going to start off through with the number index. And we're going to go all the way up to the length of self.candidates. Uh, all right, so now what exactly is happening here? So in our first position, let's just say we're currently in our first position. We're going to try out each and every possible number inside of our candidates. All right. So now what's going to happen is so for currently, let's say we go to the zero index. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that number to our path in the beginning. 
So let's just add that to our path. So path, and what is the number that we're going to add? So we're going to go to self dot candidates, and over here we're going to go to the x index, and this is what we're going to be adding to our path. This is going to be our new path. So we have an updated path, and we're also going to have to update our target over here. So now our target was uh, initially let's say seven, and then we came across the number two, so our target decreased. So our target is going to decrease by exactly this number over here. So we're gonna to go to the same number in self.candidates. But what exactly are we doing over here? So what we're doing over here is we're gonna be calling the backtracking function on itself. So self.backtrack, let's call this function and let's give it the exact same parameters. So first we wanna give it the path and this is the updated path that we have. So let's paste that over here. And the next thing that we have is the target. Now this target is also updated uh, as we consider the current number that we're on. Now finally, the question is what index do you want to give it? So basically what happened is we found the first number right now. And how do we find further numbers? So in this case, our index is going to actually be the same x value that we're currently on. And the reason that we're giving the exact same x value is because like it says over here, the same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited amount of times. In other words, let's say we chose whatever is at the zeroth index. And in the second iteration, we can choose that number again, which is why our index over here is going to be the same as this x value over here. So that's exactly why we're calling the self.backtrack function uh, with that index in place since that number can be accounted for several times. But now, as it is, it's going to go on forever and ever. There's no stopping for this function. So we want to define some sort of stopping point. So how exactly can we do this? So in order to stop it in some certain point, what we're going to do is we're going to have two if conditions. Now, when do we know that we've actually reached the ending? So we know we've reached the ending when our target is equal to zero. So when our target is equal to zero, what that's telling us is that we've already reached an ending and we're done. We don't need to do anything else. So in order to stop this, we're just going to uh, return whatever we have. But before that, that also means that we have a path, which is a valid path, which adds up to our target value. So to our self.results, we're going to append this path that we have. So self.results.append, and we're going to append the path. Now that's one of our if conditions. And the second condition we have is what if we went overboard? What if the numbers that we added up is a lot higher than the target? So in that case, our target would actually end up becoming negative. So if our target is less than zero, then in that case that we know that we've gone above the limit uh, or whatever the target is, we've crossed that boundary. And in that case, we can just directly stop it since we're not going to end up finding any answer at that specific value, all right? So hopefully this uh, did make sense. So this over here is gonna go through each and every single number, trying out all of the possibilities. And if it uh, goes over bound, we're going to end up returning it. And if we do find a proper path, then in that case, we're just gonna append that path to our results. And at the ending over here, we're uh, returning that result over here. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do check out the other videos, which are really similar to this uh, question over here, the permutation question and also the combinations to question. All right, so hopefully this video did help. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do, do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.